Hello everyone, welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly updates. And this time, and as ever, we are playing Factorio with Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And the big headline for today, at least the one that I'm um, aware of right now, is that I went off to another planet. So this is uh, this is Agnea. And if we have a quick look at the um, at the map, then Agnea is the one that's in relatively close to the sun. It's the, it's the, it's the up, it's what it's a step in from Norvis. So we get a lot more solar power available here. But there are a few things wrong with this planet. So let's have a look. But the main thing that's difficult about it is that it's waterless, and that means there aren't any lakes on the planet. You can't pull up any water out of the out of the out of the ground, out of the lakes anyway. And water is very very useful for things like power generation, whether that's coming from um, our traditional free power system, whether it's nuclear, whether it's beam energy, almost nearly all of the methods of generating power require water. And whilst we could go in and, and use the uh, and use nuclear or a beam generator, well, we can't use beam generation yet, but we could use nuclear or or any of the other ones that produce that produce st uh, steam and then pass it through a turbine, because we could use the condensing turbines, and that way you do get 90 something percent of the water back. Let's let let's let's see if we can find out. So looking through these recipes here, you can see that with the uh, with the condensing turbine or condenser turbines, you do get 99 percent of the water back. So that's that's pretty good. We would we would get nearly all the water back. So I could it, it might be possible to use that because we do actually need water for the uh, uranium process uh, sorry for the vulcanite processing but I'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a moment so again looking at looking at um, Agnea we have there's a few couple of other things difficult about it so one thing is it has a really really long day night cycle which means that um, you, you need you would need in order to keep in order to power it just off solar you would need an absolutely phenomenal quantity of um, accumulators to store all of the power that you're going to need overnight so that feels sort of unreasonable. So what I've decided to do, at least for the time being, is to have the planet almost entirely powered by solar directly. And this means that it runs fine during the day, it runs absolutely flat out, it's got plenty of power available, and then at night it runs out of power pretty quickly and just and the whole planet just goes to sleep. So it's not ideal because it's only running 50% of the time, but for now this seems like a reasonable way of doing of dealing with it. I may change my mind about this relatively soon and think I want to have it running all the time, so let's switch over to nuclear power and just worry about bringing the water in, to, in manually. Because because what we can do, and what we are in fact doing, is over here we have a delivery cannon chest, and this is bringing in, as you can see, this is bringing in ice from. Um, I think I think I believe we're doing it on Norvis. We're we're bringing the cryonite from uh, Tristan's planet of Drakit, I think, back to Norvis, where and then we're using that because you need acid as well, and it was a faff, faff to get the copper, to get the uh, iron and the sulphur out to Drakit. So back on Norvis, we are then using using the cryonite to turn water into ice, which we're then shipping out here by delivery cannon, and this uh, chemical plant here is thawing that ice out in order to make the water that we can then use. For, um, for all the rest of the processes because we need a little bit of water to grow well we need a, a fair amount of water actually to grow the uh, trees over here in order to make the uh, in order to make the wood that makes the coke that makes the uh, makes the steel that makes the delivery cannon capsules and I decided that I wanted to use the delivery cannon capsules up in order um, for all for these systems because whilst we can bring stuff in from Norvis by, de by uh, delivery cannon uh, if we don't if, if we start bringing say the things that require steel like the um, the low density structures or the um, or, or the heat, heat shield tiles in from Norvis, then we need to start worrying about balance about how, how we're going to use up the copper, and we'd have to feed that out as well by delivery cannon again. So, I reckoned it was probably worth having a little bit of water coming in by delivery cannon, and then being able to just use up all of the stuff that comes out of here, well, nearly all of the stuff that comes out of here. And that's going pretty well. We're also taking off some of the excess iron because we do get slightly more iron out of this process than we really need. Uh, and that's being fed, so as, as steel, that's being fed up here, I thought. That's interesting. I thought I had something taking the steel off and turning the, um, no, no, I haven't, I, apparently I haven't done that yet. That's weird. Oh, my, my, no, I did that on a different planet. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> so, yes, at the moment, it's all coming through a steel. We're turning that into, um, in, into uh, the low density structures and the heat shield tiles, and then we're feeding them up up here, and that's that's what's and that, and we're using those to make the delivery cannons, as you've seen a, men, uh, a number of times before. We're also potentially bringing in sulfur from um, sulfur from Norvis, but at the moment we've got enough of that on the belt here that we're not not too worried about that. So we're just letting that trickle around here, going into the warehouse over here, and then that's being used for the um, for the vulcanite processing. Now after the after making that uh, Factorio flavors video where we looked at all the different all our different designs of how to uh, how to process vulcanite best, we all decided that Tristan's design looked the prettiest and was the, and and uh, we liked that the most. So I've I intended to copy it. Um, there are a few differences between his design and mine. I think one of those is that this belt, or certainly 
this belt was outside the rest of them was, and, and stuff was being fed through underground instead of having these underground belts in here which would have been slightly more efficient with underground belts but never mind but basically the way this works is that we feed out all of the uh, the crushed along the top here until until it backs up all the and then that gets turned into the um uh, the enriched vulcanite which then fills up the belt along here when this backs all the way up and these all fill up then eventually the crushed will back up all the way into here and it will um, and then the crushed will dribble out down of here come down here and be made and be made into the vulcanite cubes down here so yeah the system um, the system works uh, as as always with these sort of things it doesn't matter exactly what layout you use they're all going to have the same level same quantity of output as they uh, as every other design because you've got a certain amount of crushed coming in and therefore you're going to have a certain amount of enriched coming out and in order and yes okay you might have bigger buffers in here with one design over another but you're always going to eventually get the same amount of vulcanite coming out of the bottom now unfortunately when i came out here i didn't bring any signal receivers with me so we don't know whether Norvis actually requires Vulcanite at the moment. Now, spoilers, it does, because Norvis always requires Vulcanite. Um, but we don't know that for certain, because we haven't got a signal receiver in here that's saying, yes, we've got minus one of it on, on, on Norvis, so please send some over. So currently, we're just stockpiling it in here, and we've got we've got up to a whole 5.4 thousand so far, which, to be honest, isn't all that much, given how much effort went into this build. But it's a start, and... I suspect at the moment this system is probably producing Vulcanite at about the same speed as, as the system out on Taishikuten, um, which we decided was horrifically in, in, insufficient, and so that's why I've been building up this. We've also got over here, we've got another system that's uh, taking sand and delivering... This, this, is, this is delivering sand over to Tristan on... Um, whatever the planet is that he's getting the holmium from uh, we've got the various other delivery cannons that are going to be shipping all kinds of things back to Norvis so we need to turn this one on um, we need to turn this one on set to start sending out um, raw rare metal, send that, send that off to Norvis uh, because there's a massive backlog of it along here so we, we need to use that up just to keep the system happy so that's going to be another thing to finish off. Now, as you can tell, this system is very, very much not finished. This is a work in progress. This is a, this is what I got up to during the last stream. And I feel like I've made some good progress on it, but it's definitely not finished. This was initially being being fed from... So let's see, there's there's a core mining drill just up here. And that's dropping off the, um, the vulcanite core chunks onto a belt. They're being brought around here along here and then into the processing facility where as as always they're getting crushed down into lots of uh, lots of vulcanite or uh, some what do we call them it's uh, normal core chunks and, and a little bit of stone as well it's all being passed off to be processed as you've seen a million times before but this time I've actually got a train system set up and running so we've now got a handful of stations some of them aren't really finished because I ran out of loaders as well so this one is um, problematic but this this chest is filling up. I'm going to have to do something about this because this is very very unbalanced. But we've got a mine. We've got a core mine there. We've got another one over here. This one's actually working properly. So when this gets up to um, a sufficient amount, I think it's 6,000. I set as the trigger. The train will come out, grab the vulcanite core chunks from here, take them off to be processed. And there's another one down here again, doing exactly the same thing. Drill so on. But again, we've missed. We haven't got any loaders for this one, so this one's idle. So at the moment, we're effectively effectively we've got two core miners running, but they're running at half speed because we've got these two as well, slowing this is slowing them down a bit. <coughs> so this system. It's a bit rubbish at the moment. It needs a bit more finishing off, as I say, and it needs a lot more core mining drills uh, adding to adding to the system. So one of the reasons that this planet is so great is because it doesn't have any biters on it at all. It's, it was just a completely a zero threat level planet, and it's quite a big one as well. So there's lots and lots of these um, core seams available for me to go out and put the drills down on. So this is going to be quite a big job. We're going to need a lot of drills, a lot, a lot of places all around here to get a decent flow of vulcanite coming through. And then once we've got that, hopefully we'll then be able to keep up with all the demands down on Norvis, where uh, where we were trying to use it for smelting and for modules and for goodness knows what else. So yes, work in progress, but it's definitely going quite well. Also bringing in oil by train. There's an oil mine over here. This, so yes, this planet does have oil. Thank goodness. I don't want to have to deal with that issue again. Uh, lots and lots, of, lots and lots of oil available here. Going into going into tanks, being picked up by the train, and that's brought over here. And we're using that mostly to make the sulfur for the uh, for the processing over here, but also partly to make the um, petroleum gas for making the the plastics and, and this an internal sulfur that's required by the uh, by the core processing thing, and also to make make uh, solid fuel, which we're then turning into processed fuel in order to keep the trains running. So the whole system works nicely together and this should 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 be okay at least you know once it's finished um, I fiddle around with the balance a little bit over here to try and get these things running at about the same speed I don't think I'm quite there I think I've probably got more of these than I need but there hasn't been enough um, vulcanite core chunks coming in for me to really tell 
and my intention is once I've got a decent flow of them coming in is to make at least one more copy of this system probably about here so I can have twice as much vulcanite coming out we can pass it all over here and the system will work much as you expect and we'll get yeah a decent a decent flow of the of the of the stuff through there is as I say a lot more to do here but you know, it's, it's, it's coming along quite well so on the subject of Vulcanite, I also ha I also had a bit of a look at Taishikuten because there were some issues going on here. Now the pr the problem we're having here, ah yes, was that this tank over here of um, of Pyroflux had had filled up completely, uh, and that was causing problems because these crushers can only these pulverizers can only output a certain amount of Pyroflux. So if there's no space in the tank, then they just can't run. They they back up and they just stop. So uh, we've got now a system of yes here we go. There's an underground pipe coming down here and down here and down all the way down 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 here so we're using some of it to cook the um, the sand into into glass in a slightly more efficient or effective way and then we're feeding some of it over I can't even find where it goes oh, here here it goes so yes this is taking the overflow of iron from the uh, from the core from the uh, core chunk pulverization so this comes along here some of this iron we are using for making the heat shield tiles in order to make the uh, delivery cannon capsules some of it we're using to make the um, the low density structures again for the uh, for the for the uh, delivery cannons but some of it is being allowed to go past like this and come down here to be made into barrels and then we're filling the barrels up with that excess pyroflux and then passing them along here where they're going into another delivery cannon and this is sending them off to Norvis and well it's it's kind of working we've sent 144 times 10 because I think I think it's 10 of these per, per delivery cannon yes so we've sent we've sent about 1400 we sent 1440 barrels of pyroflux off to Norvis and that's been kind of useful because over there we do need the pyroflux as I say we're getting through lots and lots of it uh, we're getting through lots and lots of it's coming from being, and most of it's being made from vulcanite which isn't ideal so this system uses up that excess um, iron that comes through here like that which is nice and it uh, and um, it allows us to get rid of some of the excess pyroflux and at the moment conveniently it seems to be basically keeping up which is nice because I was a, I was a bit worried that we were going to not have enough um, excess iron coming through here and this system just wasn't going to be able to keep up but so far it's actually been absolutely fine and we don't seem to have run out of um, uh, delivery cannon capsules yet now I have noticed that I think the uh, the backlog might have dropped quite a bit uh, we've got to the point where there um, there aren't any on the right hand side of the belt as it comes down here or and across here so maybe this isn't keeping up quite as well as it should be or maybe this is just seriously prioritizing the top side of the belt it's, it, it's kind of hard to tell but at the moment things are okay so I'm not too worried about it yet at the moment so yes I think that's working quite well but it definitely needs to be monitored. Right, so next let's have a go over and have a, um, a bit of a, a bit of a look at um, what's been going on on Norvis. So um, let's see. Firstly, what's, 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 Tristan has been doing stuff remotely because um, he, that, that's that's how he rolls, I suppose. Um, over here he's got a he's put in an alarm system so we we had an issue where every so often the uh, core chunk processing will will back up because something will overflow so the most recent one was we had too much stone in this in this uh, warehouse here now that's been sorted out reasonably well we've now down to 130 something um, stacks of it in here so the, and it's and it's actually going down we are apparently using up bricks which is a thing um, but previously we had a problem with that we weren't using up the uh, the outputs of these as fast as they were coming as, as fast as they were being produced and so Tristan has now put an alarm system on something I don't see where though I assumed it was going to be on this chest Oh yes, there it is. I just couldn't see the couldn't see the speaker pole. So this is monitor. This is now monitoring for when there is greater than two thousand uh, core chunks in here, because basically there should always be none. Uh, it should sort of fill up and it, it should sorry it should it should pass it out as fast as it comes in. So this is just a buffer and a balancer. Um, so if that ever goes above two thousand, it'll set off an alarm and we'll get an alert popping up in the bottom corner of the screen here to tell us it, to tell us all about it. He's also started making loudspeakers on the bus because with him playing remotely he can't make them in his pockets and send them and, and, and just put, put them up so uh, so he had to do that first uh, he's also put in a lot more core process a lot more core processing machines jeez that's a lot of pulverizers we don't have core chunks coming in anything like this quickly uh, maybe if we upgraded all of these to tier i don't know four five productivity modules um then then maybe we would need this many but then by that point hopefully we'd have put some beacons and some speed modules in this is this is a bit crazy um Although we have had a train just show up here, it's unloading quite quickly. Um, so this will now flow in here and then flow out to all of these belts, and you'll you'll, you'll see stuff kick in as 
as much as it ever does basically we've got a lot we've got four belts on the input and not a lot more than four on the output so as you can see they're only about half full but it keeps the system running we get a decent we get a decent flow through and as i've always said this is useful as a nice top up to what we're getting from the mines it's not going to keep the entire system the entire factory running it'd be nice if it did but it doesn't seem to but um it's better than nothing He's also added another alert alerter speaker for too much stone, presumably on here. Yes, there it is. So this one will go off if there's more than 25,000 stone in there. So, again, these are just warnings that let us know there's a problem somewhere in the factory. We might need to think about going and looking at it. <laughs> He's fixed the lithium display on the big display of doom over here. So this now shows the correct amount of lithium. We have lots and lots of lithium, so that's basically full. This is looking pretty good. We still haven't, we have still haven't got copper um, uh, ingots being made, but so that's, that's as low as you'd expect. I think steel ingots are being stopped at... They only fill up to 50%, um, and the same with iron ingots. So that's probably why those are limited there. He says he's tweaked the dividers on the display, so full stations make it look full. I think I might have just um, disputed that with the, with these two ingot ones here that seem to be stuck at exactly 50%. Um, but it does give you a nice feel that we've got we've got plenty of most things, but we're not completely full of oil. Ooh, oil just went up a little bit. We're not we're, and we're not completely full of um, iron ore and copper ore. We could have more of those available, but it's probably adequate because they're all green. So we're basically happy with that. He says he's set the copper ore to go from cores to more smelters. So um, presumably that means that from um, yeah, the smelting system up here. So copper, presumably there's more smelting available up here. Now, I guess I guess that's what he means. Um, so, yes, um, good. Uh, oh, no, so copper from... No, it's a copper ore from core processing. So the ones that are coming up here now go up the, to these ones and also up and into these ones over here as well. So there's a bit more... There's a few more um, uh, process, few more lanes that can process the uh, the core fragments as well um, rather than only being able to do the, do the copper from here. So that should improve the throughput from the uh, core mining a bit, I guess. Uh, put in some more voiding for the mineral water. So a lot, a lot of playing around with the core system. So yes, as you, as you might be aware, we're producing far more mineral water here than we know what to do with. It's all going in down here. So presumably, the, uh, the I guess these, some of these have been put in as additional, um, additional spray guns that are just blowing the mineral water off into the, into, into the air because. To be quite honest, so much of it comes out of out of this system. We just don't know what to do with it all. It's crazy. And he's put some more trains into the system as well for reasons I, I'm not sure what for. And while we're on Norvis, let's have a look at what Mark has been up to as well. So Mark was was back this week, so he's been doing some um, some, some some more improvements of everything that goes on on Norvis. So he says he's doubled the uranium processing. So that presumably means well, he's gone from two two two. Well, four rows of it to eight rows of it, so that means the uranium will be processed through from the uranium ore faster. We'll get a little bit more of all of the um, all of the ores and all the useful. Uh, sorry, all of these, all of the outputs coming through, um, and then we can that hopefully will mean the Covrex will be able to run a little bit more constantly. So we'll get more of the um, spicy uranium coming through here, and yes, it it seems to be working. It looks like uh, things are going nicely here. We've got um, we've got let's see how how much have we got. We've got a hundred thousand of the um, dull uranium and. None. Oh, a train, a train, a train worth four, four thousand of the of the spicy uranium. So, yes, I mean, we're getting some of it together. It does every so often. We do need to launch some of it up into space because it's needed for research up there. But basically, I mean, it's still kind of slow. But I guess there's, we're probably if we if we improve, if we build it up any more, we're going to be limited by the by the rate the ore is coming in at. I suspect. So, there's only so much you can do. Um, yeah. Are all of these now running? Yeah, they're all of all of these Covrex machines are now running. So that does mean we can come in and steal a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, spicy stuff out of them, put in even more machines doing Covrex. But then we would have a lot less um, dull uranium in pasta over here. But there is quite a lot of that. So I think doing more Covrex would probably be a good idea. Uh, he's been beaconing the uh, steel production, uh, iron and steel production. Nice. I've been, w I've been thinking that would be a good idea for a while, and uh, now it looks like he's finally had a chance and time and a chance to do it. So over here we have now, as you can see, we've got solid productivity modules in basically everything, everything that'll take them, and then speed modules in beacons to speed them up and keep and make them run at a decent speed. So. Normally, the I, I'm not sure what the crafting speed of on these things is normally, but we're going 45% faster than we would because of all of these speed modules, and despite the, but that's despite getting a 30% productivity boost out of them as well, um, from because of all the productivity modules. So we, the uh, productivity modules are pulling the speed down, but then the speed modules are pushing it straight back up again. 
and up here we've got more uh, wow we've got a lot of beacon we've got a lot of speed modules on these things so these are plus 180 percent so that again getting huge amounts of speed boost out of these and down here again as well same sort of thing so we've got the um plus 75 percent speed and only a plus 18 percent productivity from these ones because they can you can only fit three modules in these but the uh, the plus 30 percent out of these is going to make a huge difference i think so that, that's that's really good it'll get us a lot more um a lot more steel out of uh, steel out of the top here and presumably the same thing is going to be going on over here with the iron uh yes we've got again got exactly the same sort of setup going on here i wonder is there no we, we probably can't i imagine we can't uh, productivity module these because they're just chopping the uh, the ingots up into into iron plates oh, actually it's not an end product so i don't know i'm guessing because um mark hasn't done it that means you can't do it because i suspect if you could then you would have done because uh, that's a really obvious place to get a little bit more of a productivity boost so i'm guessing you probably can't do that we'll check that He's removed an old dead iron mine. That's fine. We need to tidy those up every so often. He started making the water ice. That's so I was talking about that out on uh, Agnea, where I, I need it for um, uh, for for all of my for basically anything that requires water, which is mostly the vulcanite processing. Um, we need we need a supply of water coming in there. So we did, as I was saying, we had the cryonite being dropped in here by delivery cannon we seem to be um, yep, just like that as i say we seem to be pulling it out faster than the uh, the other planet is able to ship it over but at least um, every so often a load of it drops in and we can just pass it straight through like that then some of the cryonite is going off this way to be made into modules some of it is going off this way down to here okay that's the station to take it away if we ever need it but down here we're making water ice so we've got a train bringing in the sulfuric acid that you use to dissolve the cryonite um, and the and then with no you well, dissolve the cryonite and then you add water to it and somehow that produces ice. Uh, it's a suitably made up chemical re reaction. But the, pro the point is this process produces the ice we need and then passes it over here to this delivery cannon, which is receiving the signal from Agnea and is then shipping it out as and when it's required. And so far it's sent over 17 stacks and a stack is um, 200 ice and 200 ice turned into quite a lot of water, I think. Yes, 200 ice turned into... 200 ice will turn into about 20,000 water, I think. So we're getting a lot. Each one of this is an incredibly efficient way to transport uh, water around the solar system. Much, much better than uh, trying to barrel it up, barrel water up, and send it by, by, by send, then send that by delivery cannon. That's horrible. And I'm very glad we never actually tried to do that. <laughs> Although then I suppose I could have used the barrels to send the pyroflux back to Norvis, and they could have gone round and round and round. But I suspect we've been pulling a lot more water over that way than we would have been pulling, um, uh, pulling the back, uh, pulling, send, sending pyroflux back. So we would have, we would have backed up. So that would not have been ideal. Mark has been also been working on a builder train. So where are the trains? The trains lurk down here. So we see um, Mark's train is the green one. So if we have a look at if we have a look at this train, I suspect if we look in one of these wagons in the grid. Yes, here we go. In this grid, we've got some vehicle robo ports. We've got an energy absorber, and the energy absorber uh, means it can charge these internal batteries up from. I can't see the thing. Oh yeah, from this from this tes Tesla tower, Tesla coil here. So when the train pulls in, if these batteries aren't full, it will charge them up because it's it's close enough to it. It can just zap the power across like that. That charges that up, and then when the train pulls up somewhere that needs needs some building to be done, it's got a load of um, well, it's got some robo ports in it. It doesn't seem to have any robots, which is a little bit unfortunate. It means it probably won't work. So I think this might be a work in progress. Um, and the back one's got the same. But the idea is, uh, is there anything in the? In Oh, the, the, yeah, it's got this quite acceleration stuff in the, in the, the, the loco So the locomotives have uh, in their grid have these acceleration motors and batteries and an absorber, and that means they can pick up speed more quickly when they set off. The wagons have got the uh, the building stuff in their grid, so they can then go out and they can build stuff. So here we have um, we have blue chests, and that means these can request all the things that you would then want to put into your into your wagon. Uh, so I don't know what he's trying to build at the moment, but whatever it is, it appears to require inserters and belts and rail and signals and warehouses and so on. And there are the robots that are going to do the actual building for him. Oh, oh he's probably going out to build a mining uh, a mining outpost. And then over here, he's got the same thing again. So maybe it's a big mining outpost. And then on the next to it, he's got these purple strong boxes. And the point of these is a strong box, a purple box, will say if, if anything's put in it, it will say I don't want this, take it away. And the um, logistics bots will fly over, they'll grab it and they'll take it away and put it somewhere reasonably appropriate hopefully that's going to go into a blue chest that wants whatever it is um for example down or a, a filtered yellow chest so for example the wood when they go out and they pull down a load of trees and then we need to turn that in and then we need to um put that into the logistics system maybe that'll get over, brought over and put in that steel again what's 
Uh, oh, he here we go. Here we go. It goes into the wood. It will probably be taken off and put in the wood chest here. Stone will be taken off, put in the stone in, in, in a stone system, and so on. So we get rid of all the stuff that's been pulled up as part of the um, as part of the build. And then if there's any excess left in there because they took more stuff out than they needed, that can be dumped into here as well. It can go back into the system. So this this, this should should allow you to... There's going to be some sort of cunning circuit control system going on here as well. So there's going to be a way of saying, I'm going to go, therefore I should load. And then I've just come back, therefore I need to unload. And the system should uh, should keep could keep things working nicely. Now, I haven't looked into exactly how this works, but that gives, gives you a vague idea of it. I'm not sure what this is doing here. Uh, this seems to be... It's, use, it's using my train, which is a little bit cheeky. Um, I don't know what's going on with this train, but it seems to be asking for... Um, it seems to be being given fuel, thruster suits, and power armor. Uh, it, but then none of that's being f fed out here. So this has been oh, this has been filtered to coke. Oh yeah, this is when somebody was ty trying to tidy something up, so they requested all the coke to here and put it into my train and then drove it off somewhere. Um, I don't really care because I'm not on this planet, therefore I don't really care what they do with my train. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's spare for now and I'll, I'll come back and complain next if, if I'm ever back on Norvis, which seems relatively unlikely the way things are going. Mark also cleaned up some stone ore contamination on a uranium mine. Um, he's also put in a load more extra stone bricks on all the way along here to, because, as, as, said, as we said, we had an excess of, um, of stone bricks, so, or excess of stone. So he's used up an enormous quantity of it to just tile this entire area in stone bricks. I mean, as I was saying a couple of weeks ago, it feels like an enormous waste of stone, but then if we ever do want any of it, if we do ever start to run out of stone bricks, we can just reclaim it like that. So it'll be a big job for the bots, but it's there and we can reclaim it if we want to. A better system would be, to, and I think what uh, Tristan and Mark have been trying to do, a better system would be to try and keep the um, the smelting system up here a little bit more balanced. So we we just stop bringing it in when we have when we start to have a, a, de a decent amount we stop bringing it in from the mines and therefore we'll only need to go out and start paving the world if too much stone comes in from um, from the core mining and from the high priority stations <sighs> we'll see how it goes but basically i think it's now been set up so until this if this alarm goes off then we can put down some more bricks if it doesn't go off it should be okay it <laughs> should oh and mark added in um, a sulfur delivery system i think think no hang on i didn't wait a minute didn't i do that yes over here i put, I put in the self delivery system why is it on why is it on his um his list maybe maybe he turned it on for me because i forgot or something silly like that but yes this is now this is the one that's um delivering the um the sulfur out to agnea which isn't actually required anymore um in fact it's been turned off completely um because i'm now making it from the um from the uh, from the oil rather than shipping it in from Norvis because you know there's there's no point in, uh, in in shipping it over there when I can make it out out there on site these these delivery cannons are mostly for things that you can't get on on site for whatever reason finally since I'm over here on on Norvis let's have a quick look at Norbit because I know Tristan's done a little bit of stuff up there as well um, apparently there was t too much warm thermofluid so he's put more radiators in um, okay is that this one? Is, are you, are you, do you count as warm? 25 degrees? Yeah, that is warm. So I'm not sure why he put more radiators rather than another tank in, but sure. Okay. <laughs> um, he's done some... Yeah, he's done some... Yeah. Okay, so he's not really done anything more in, in, uh, in Norbit yet. The the big thing is still going to be the railway systems, but he's obviously been busy with other... Busy doing things on... Um, on down down on down on Norvis itself, and probably off on Njord, which we shall look at in the uh, in the next uh, in, in in the next video tomorrow's video. So yes, that's um, that's all the things that have been going on. Uh, well, it's, <laughs> how am I splitting this video? How am I splitting these videos up? Well, let's just say that's everything that's happened um, inside. It's everything that's happened inside Kalidas Asteroid Belt 1. <laughs> so it's been Agnea, it's been Norvis and Norvis Orbits. It's just been this this area. Oh, and Taishakutan. I touched on Taishakutan as well. Um, nobody's been to any of these moons or planets. The rest of us are all out here or here. So we'll talk about the, these ones um, in tomorrow's video. And um, so, yes, come back then for, 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 for that update. Uh, if you're enjoying the video, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It makes a big it makes a big difference to me. The more people I've got subscribed, the better YouTube advertises my videos. The more the channel can grow, the better the more videos I can make, and so on. You know, you know how this works. It's very worth it for me if I can if I can if if I can have some more people subscribing. It makes the whole sort of the cha channel much more um, if it work much better, should we say? 
Also, please check out our sponsor. That's tree4.be. Uh, if you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you can get 20% off your first month of uh, hosting with, of a, um, a Factorio or Minecraft or Seven Days to Die or Mindustry or so on servers. Uh, they're, they're, they seem to be really good. They're currently hosting the supporter server for um, anyone on my, on, on my channel who wants to play along. Uh, speaking of which, if you are a channel supporter, so that means a, a YouTube member, a Twitch subscriber, or you've dropped in a donation on Ko-Fi, then uh, make sure you're on the Discord and you'll have access to the uh, the secret supporter-only areas on, on there. And that'll give you access to the uh, to the um, Factorio server, which is another identical playthrough to this one, um, but being played through by by my supporters. So if you want to join in on that, see if you can do do your own version of this but better, then that would be a great place, place to start. So make sure you're a supporter and come along and join us for that. Let's see, so today is Friday. That means there's going to be a video tomorrow for the um, uh, for the second half of this of this update, and then w I shall hopefully have a video out on Tuesday uh, with some more Factorio messing around. Uh, there'll be a videos videos on Thursdays with uh, with GTA. They're very worth checking out. Lots of fun, lots of excitement and action. Uh, still a very different feel to these videos, but I think they're a lot of fun, and I, I would recommend checking them out. Um, and of course, every night I've got my uh, my fitness ones coming out at the moment while I do my 100 ton challenge all the way through January. <laughs> so yes, lots going on on the channel. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll come back for the rest of it. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.